How's everybody doing today? By show of hands, how many of you, uh, how many of you have stress? Uh, great, you're bragging. That's, that's what we do with stress. Stress is something you wish you didn't have. Then when you get together with your friends, you'll kill each other. Trying to convince them you have more of it. Now, related to this would be your perception of stress. Do you ever go to work? You go, thank God it's Friday. You ever do that? Every Friday? Now, you know you have eight more hours, but you're excited because the weekend's coming. Monday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you're moping around. Your buddy's going, what's the matter, Sparky? It's Monday. But you're out of here in two hours. You're thinking, how can I have fun knowing I have four more days? Now, what is your favorite day of the week? Saturday? Who said Saturday? Sign of a very stable person. I'm going to tell you why in another few minutes. Anybody else favorite day of the week? Wednesday. Who said Wednesday? No, nobody has Wednesday as a favorite day. <laughs> why Wednesday? You already paid your taxes, so you're working for yourself. You figured out everything, didn't you? <laughs> anybody else like, like Wednesday? that isn't worried about their taxes? Uh, why, why, why Wednesday? So Wednesday, you're like, wow. It's almost Friday. <laughs> and then when Friday comes, ah, it's only Friday. I can't wait till next Wednesday when it's going to be Friday. <laughs> See, what we do is we time shift, don't we? We can't enjoy the moment because we're focused on the future. And you can't get people on the phone anymore. Did you ever try to get AT&T on the phone? <laughs> I've been waiting 20 years to use this. <laughs> I feel like I'm home. <laughs> now get the post office in here. I got another complaint. <laughs> I try to get AT&T on the phone. You can't get them on the phone. You got, oh, if you want sales, press one. Service, press two. If you want to talk to somebody, press three. Side, press three. If you want to talk about your bill, press one. Talk about your service, press two. If you're annoyed, press three. Side, press three. If you're annoyed about your bill, press one. <laughs> annoyed about your service, press two. And after 45 minutes, they said, if you'd like to complete your call, press four. So I press four, they hung up on me. <laughs> oh, and then they say, for immediate response, please go to our website. I'm thinking, that's where I got your number. <laughs> well, do you ever notice that when you talk to your friends about their problems, you sound like Dr. Phil? When it's your own problem, you sound like Ozzy Osbourne? <laughs> the reason why is when it's your friend's problem, you're using your prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain responsible for this good, rich information. When it's your own problem, you use the amygdala, the emotional portion of their brain, Information literally goes into the amygdala, and that's where the fight or flight response comes from. Now, I know you knew this, but it actually bypasses, information bypasses the prefrontal cortex, and now you're thinking like a child. Anybody? Instantly, you change behavior. My nephew wanted to come over. He's six years old. Anybody have little ones? They have toys all over the place, and you can't get them to pick up the toys. My nephew, six years old, wanted to come over. My sister said, he's a slob. He's going to ruin your house. I said, he'll be fine. He came over. She was right. Railroad tracks all over the living room. And I realized yelling wasn't going to work. Never does, does it? So I figured out, oh, you know what? I called him on a cell phone. <laughs> well, every six-year-old has one because you never know when your friends are going to need you for a play date. I said, is this Sax Construction and Clearing? He says, yes, sir. We're the best in the business. I said, I got railroad tracks all over the living room. I said, can you bring them in the basement? Yes, sir. I'll get right on. He loved it. I, we were doing it all week. I called up my sister. I said, you'll never have any problems with your son again. So she tried it. Railroad tracks all over the living room. She said, is this sax construction and clearing? He says, yes, ma'am. We're out of business. <laughs> Doesn't always work, but you got to try. <laughs> but relationships are just so good for you. They found that when you're in a great relationship, interleukin-6, which is responsible for inflammation of the joints in your arteries, actually goes down. When you're in a great relationship, your inflammation decreases. They found that wounds, wounds heal a lot quicker when you're in a great relationship. So if you've had a wound that's been lingering for just a little too long, 
Just say to your spouse, you know, if you treated me better, this wound would heal months ago. I said that last week, and a woman said if he treated me better, he wouldn't have the wound. <laughs> she was great. So you see the difference between id, we all have it, the ego I could get caught, and the superego says it's not, it's not right. And the reason I say this to you is because a lot of times when we're talking to children and we're talking to other people and we, we go, you shouldn't do that. No, we want to do that too. We have to get down to their level, ask open-ended questions where neither one of us know the answer. We come up with solutions, but we want to be very humble when we're trying to change everybody else's behavior as opposed to talking from a higher authority. Uh, you can use humor for so many reasons. You can think out of the box. Do you ever get together and you brainstorm with your group and you go, let's think out of the box? And what happens? Everybody's box burns, doesn't it? Nobody knows how to think out of the box. They go, now what do I do? I don't know how to think out of the box. Simple technique you can do. I have this girl I went out with years ago. We were, back, we were kids at the time. Friends for years and she was always in great shape. And now she's older, has three kids. She's starting to gain weight. She called me up a while ago. She said, I can't stop eating. I'm gaining weight. What should I do? I said, well, I can't tell you to stop eating. I said, that's obviously a problem. I said, tell you what, you can eat as much as you want as long as you eat it in front of a mirror naked. I talked to you the other day. I said, how's it coming? She said, I haven't lost any weight, but my family hasn't eaten in three days. <laughs> you, can, you can change behavior, and life is a chess match. You don't have to, you don't have to fight with people. Uh, do you ever have people, they have paper all over the floor, and you go, can't you pick the paper up off the floor? And wh how do you get them to pick the paper up off the floor? What do you do? You yell, it doesn't work, right? Simple technique, a friend of mine did this. All he did was he had little sheets of paper saying, congratulations, you just won a dollar. He placed them all over the floor. They were picking those sheets. Of he had to start notarizing them because they started Xeroxing. Congratulations, you just won a dollar. <laughs> Listen, you guys have been a lot of fun. If you, I want to thank you for, well, I guess you had to come. Thanks for staying. <laughs> and if you have any questions, you can go to my website at uh, www.healthhumor.com. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day.